Welcome to PCR TV at EuroPCR 2018. I'm Ziad Ali from Columbia University Medical Center, and I'm joined by Luis Raposa from Hospital Santa Cruz in Portugal at Lisbon, and by Keith Oldroyd from Golden Jubilee in Scotland. Welcome, gentlemen. We're here to today to talk about resting coronary indices, or non-hyperemic pressure ratios. Keith, one of the new indices is the diastolic pressure ratio. Tell us a little bit about the background of where the diastolic pressure ratio came from, as well as the presentation. So IFR, as you know, requires ECG gating to identify the sampling window. So we uh, used the data set from Verify2 to have a look at diastolic pressure ratios using only the dichrotic notch to identify different periods of diastole. And in fact, we looked at six equivalents, if you like, of, of IFR. One of them was the whole of diastole. Then we looked at the middle 50% of diastole, the midpoint of diastole, and then three different versions of IFR not calculated using Volcano uh, software, but offline using uh, a MATLAB algorithm. Uh, one of those was the exact time window of IFR, and the other two were minus 50 milliseconds and minus 100 milliseconds, respectively. And it really is remarkable how each of these different uh, versions of diastolic pressure ratio generate almost identical numerical values. And so that was published in uh, Jack Intervention at the end of December. This morning, we presented another version of diastolic pressure ratio, this time using a new algorithm which doesn't require ECG gating or the identification of the dichrotic notch. And again, that was extremely robust and showed you know, essentially identical numerical values to IFR. What do you think about the wave-free period? Is there any magic left in it? What's the value left in the wave-free period? Well, the wave-free period, when it was introduced, was, first of all, you know, new to everyone and had some very enticing uh, ideas behind it, such that the, the concept was that resistance during the wave-free period at rest was identical, both in stability and magnitude, to resistance during the whole cardiac cycle in hyperemia so that essentially you could replace FFR with PDPA during the wave-free period. Now, it turned out subsequently that in fact resistance is substantially lower when you induce hyperemia and compare it to the wave-free period. And also the fact that all of these other indices which are not predicated on identifying a wave-free period give identical numerical values really, I think, uh, kills the idea that there's anything unique about the wave-free period as such. What we've got here is a generic form of resting uh, stenosis severity assessment. Luis, PREDICT looked at things slightly differently. Tell us about the PREDICT study and how you feel it impacts the field of coronary physiology. The way that we looked at it, it was not in such a way that we wanted to find if that would be similar to IFR anyway, but just to come up with a new approach to the, to the same concept of measuring a pressure ratio during the part of the cardiac cycle in which flow would be the highest at rest. That, that was the idea behind the PDPA concept. And of course, directly as an extension of your work, we presented today the RFR, mm -hmm. which is another non-hyperemic pressure ratio, which is unbiased, so it doesn't focus only on diastole, but also looks for the lowest PDPA throughout the cardiac cycle unbiased to systole or diastole without the need for an EKG. Mm -hmm. So, Keith, we have DPR, PDPA, PDPA min, RFR, DFR. Are they different? Are they all the same? Yeah, well, the field's getting a little cluttered. There's no doubt about it. I think it is clear now that all of these uh, resting indices of stenosis severity will generate identical numerical values. And as we demonstrated this morning, the difference between them is so minute that it's actually less than the, the resolution of, of pressure measurements themselves. So we believe that all of these can be used interchangeably and that it is indeed a class effect. So Luis, if that's the case, is there a need for ongoing clinical trials? Do we need to prove this prospectively that this really is 
what it says it is? It's hard to say at this point, I think. We have to wait a few, uh, some time to see how this will develop into translation to clinical practice. But I agree with, uh, with Dr. Aldroyd in that it would be very difficult to put a trial together that would compare all of these things at the same time, or even, even one to another, in terms of hard clinical outcomes, which is at the end what matters for our patients. So having said that, it's really hard to tell. What's your take on this? Do we, do we need or don't we need new trials? Well, I think these are non-biological correlations. 99%, uh, the, the utility of performing a clinical trial to determine a difference uh, when things are 99% correlated would A, take forever, and B, highly unlikely to yield any meaningful result. So uh, it's my opinion that they're, these are really the same. This is a class effect and that there are many roads to Scotland. And this uh, RFR would be one, DPR would be another, IFR another, and PDP another. I, I think, Ziad, the important thing now is that, unlike the situation, let's say, a year or two years ago, where if you wanted to use IFR, you are compelled to use a particular product. Yeah. Clinicians want to use different pressure wires for all sorts of reasons. And so now, with these various other uh, resting indices, DPR, your own RFR, clinicians now have a, an, the option to look at resting indices of stenosis severity irrespective of what kit they're using in the cath lab. And I think that has to be an advance. I think uh, the, the standing room only for the presentations uh, speaks for itself. And I think that clearly the addition of more non-hyperemic pressure ratios should increase overall global utilization of physiology and increase awareness in this area so that we're all using coronary physiology to assess patients and to try to optimize outcomes for our patients. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having us.